I would like to say a word before beginning today, just a huge thank you to Al Waddell as senior deacon who has served us faithfully and well through this most challenging year. Um, it is good that as we come to this day, you have been our leader. So thank you for guiding us so well, so lovingly. Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. By his own admission, Jeremiah was a reflective, private person for whom the hard public life of God's prophet was absolutely abhorrent. So even after God clearly says, I choose you to be my prophet, and I chose you while you were still in your mother's womb, it isn't surprising that the introverted Jeremiah responds, I don't know anything. I'm only a boy. And I don't want this job. Yahweh doesn't take no for an answer. Rarely does Yahweh take no for an answer. But here in this story, the God of Abraham, who created each and every one of us and the universe, reaches down and touches Jeremiah's lips and literally impresses on the young man the gravity of his new job. God says, you are working for me now. You will speak for me. Your job is to pull up and tear down, to take apart and demolish, and then to start over, to build and to plant. Thus begins the job of a teenage prophet, a prophet whose prophecy will go on for 50 years. That's right, this is a lifetime assignment for Jeremiah making him the longest serving prophet in biblical history. The relationship between God and God's prophet is very much in your face. For Isaiah, it's a burning coal on his lips. And we'll hear more about him in the weeks to come. And a lot more than that. For Ezekiel, it is three chapters of wild beasts flying around and finally God's words, words serve to Ezekiel as a meal for him to consume on the scroll, and that's how he gets the prophecy from God, as his meal from God. For Paul, God has to knock him off his high horse, literally has to blind him and silence him because he can't see straight and he certainly can't hear well, and until God finds somebody on the ground to communicate what Paul's supposed to do, Paul is left in this state. For Jesus, God speaks when he rises from the water of baptism. As he goes into the wilderness, God ministers to him with angels. And upon the mountaintop, God appears again. And throughout his ministry, his death, his rising, God is constantly coaching God's only begotten son how to be a prophet. This week, I had some in-your-face time alone with God. I had time to pray, to read, to reflect, to meditate, and to literally walk on water. Well, frozen water, just the same as the rest of you were doing all week. It was frozen water, but more commonly known as snow. And I was going through the woods, through the farm, through the fields, as I reflected each day on the prophetic gifts that God gives us and God's grace. I walked for miles each day this week on frozen land, listening to and watching God's creatures, great and small, surviving in the harshness of the week in winter. As I followed their hoof prints and their claw prints and their paw prints in the snow, I came to this clear realization. We can no longer view the prophetic as a gift and activity reserved for human beings alone. Certainly not for a select group of human beings alone. 
I believe as I walked in creation this week that all creation is crying out. All creation is prophetic because from our faith perspective, all creation is infused with the prophetic and wise spirit of the divine. Thus all creation communicates the wonders and the mystery, the complexity and the beauty of the divine. Creation is crying out and speaking to each of us. Are we listening? Creation is asking for us to care, is crying out for justice. As a part of creation, we as human beings, regardless of our status, our race, our class, our sexual orientation, our gender identity, our ethnicity, or age, ability, or religious belief, or no belief, all have the potential to be prophetic and to act prophetically. For those of us who are Christian, we come to this by virtue of our baptism. We are anointed into the prophetic tradition and called to embrace and exercise our prophetic charism and vocation. Moreover, I believe each of you is called to be a prophet. I believe this is not just a guess work. I believe it is a God work for all of us. This gift of grace invites you to speak and act on social, political, and religious issues, on judicial officials, on power brokers, on those who are involved in the community's economy and well-being. To act prophetically is to work for justice, to align ourselves with humans and non-humans who are living on the margins and trying to survive, to decenter and eventually dismantle power structures while unseating their uh, leaders who would do harm to humans and creation. Each of us, in our own little ways, is called to be a prophet of God. And no, as we've already found out from Jeremiah, is not the answer. To act prophetically to expose inequity and discrimination of all types is a noble work that cannot wait. Jeremiah reminds us that our prophetic call is to the nations and our prophetic call spans the globe. In this current pandemic, we are experiencing the great reset of our global economy. The COVID-19 crisis is said to be the cause of political and economic and social disruptions and as we know, the pandemic has exposed the inconsistencies, inadequacies, and contradictions of multiple systems. In reality, however, one needs to ask this question. Is the pandemic being weaponized by the world's powerful techno-feudal lords as a means to reset the global economy so that the wealthiest of nations and the wealthiest of citizens in nations can enrich themselves and flourish at the expense of others' demise and devastation. We need only to tabulate the astronomical profit gains, gains of certain industries, including the pharmaceutical industry and the gun industry, telecommunications and social media giants, such as Zoom and Facebook and TikTok and Instagram, and mega corporations like Amazon, whom we often seem to be addicted to and serving rather than the other way around. All of these many gains and efforts are occurring during a present time in history that non-Western nations like those in Africa and Asia and Latin America sink deeper into poverty and people around the globe struggle to make ends meet with a just wage afforded to them in an era of tragic loss with no end in sight. As God's prophets standing with humanity and all creation, we have to ask, who are Judah's kings and princes, priests and people today, whom Jeremiah would address in a bold and unwavering way? Who would Jesus and Peter be speaking directly to today? Where are the prophetic voices and persons addressing the Great Reset now? In a time when compliance seems to be the order of the day and loyalty to leadership reverses 
values that we hold. Who are the ones? I believe we are the ones. I believe you are the ones. You and the, are the prophets of God. You're the ones that God needs to speak out on behalf of all creation and humanity. Please don't say you're too young or too old, too busy or too committed to some other thing. This too and that too won't matter. As you know, God's not gonna take no for an answer. So God is speaking, let's not run and hide. I'll go one step further. We of all people should be aspiring to rise, to shine, to speak out, and to change the conditions around us. I'm reminded of that so fully by the opportunity last month to read and record and deliver the incredible sermon of Dr. Licklater from this pulpit on December 6, 1931, the day that this Cathedral of Grace was dedicated. In his sermon 90 years ago, Dr. Licklater spoke of the spell of the Gothic. He said that the spell of the Gothic and the cathedral spirit is one which rises and is always aspiring. While this always aspiring spirit calls us time and time again back to this incredible cathedral of God, this temple of God's holiness. In the words of the apostle Paul to the people at Corinth, the belief that you are the temples of God are what really matters. You are the ones called to follow and to lead. You are the living presence of God whose spirit is enshrined in your heart. You are the ones through which God is always aspiring in this world. The moment is upon us to emerge from isolation. We all need to do that to enter our communities and the global arena prophetically, to read the signs of the times, and to expose and address the critical issues of this moment, of our present realities, before the survival of the fittest, economically, socially, politically, and culturally, takes shape in this new world order, already evolving behind our masked existence. The time is now. As I walked, among the freezing little ones in creation this week, I could hear their tiny voices calling, calling for help, calling for care, calling to each other and to anyone else who would listen. They will be our partners in this time and the time ahead because we are connected to them and we cannot abandon them. Remember, the prophetic word is always a graced word, and no matter how searing it may be, the prophetic word always invites transformation. It calls us to always aspire to a better world and a better way. The gospel according to Jesus, speaking in the synagogues, reminds us that the prophets are not accepted in their own land, more specifically in their own hometowns. Indeed, political, religious, and social leaders want to toss prophets over the cliff because prophets shake up the status quo, and that's what Jesus was doing. But that is a reason to be inspired not to quit. For those of us who dare to act prophetically like Jeremiah and Jesus in our world and with all creation hungering for hope, in a vision of justice and peace, we have the promise and the presence of God. I am with you always to deliver you, says the Holy One, whose power working within us continually empowers us to work that must be done. Finally, Paul reminds us in the passage so beautifully read by Al. Paul reminds us that love is the greatest of all things, of all virtues. Love and justice must always be at the heart of our prophetic mission. It is an insatiable love for the divine and for all creation, making the work of justice even more compelling and forever alluring that draws us and aspires, calls us to aspire even more. So my friends, each one of us is God's temple each one of us is called to prophetic witness on behalf of humanity and all creation. 
May this new year of serving God at First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, be the year in which we all, all, always aspire to follow God and to be Christ's witnesses in this world. Amen.